morning. Um, just uh, start by saying, uh, um, after watching everything, just really our approach was, um, as I stated after the game, um, very uh, disappointing performance, but uh, um, just chose to, you know, we obviously watched it, we graded it and, and uh, all that, but um, really uh, chose to flush it and press on with our guys. That was the focus yesterday and, and just really focused more on them and their mindset and where we're at physically and mentally and getting our guys squared away in that regard. And uh, um, just really, um, that was the emphasis and that we want to be able to do and get our guys ready for the next one. And that's the focus. So um, update with Jack, um, he, uh, he'll be week to week. Uh, so I don't know as of right now, um, his status. Um, same with Michael, Michael's still week to week. And uh, um, Taiwan played a few snaps. Uh, he uh, hopefully will get better this week. Um, did not play near as what we hoped he would be able to play, but uh, he is progressing. Same with, with uh, Reese, continue to with those guys. And uh, just really uh, focus now on getting our guys healthy. And uh, we'll be practicing accordingly with that goal in mind to be able to do a great job of making sure our guys are fresh uh, mentally and physically when we take the field on Saturday uh, in College Park. So. Um, Three, three guys to mention from the game. Just want to make sure I always recognize our scouts. Um, Eli Jokum is our offensive scout of the week, wide receiver. Chase Washington, our defensive scout of the week, uh, cornerback. And Patrick Finley is our special team scout of the week, one of our safeties. So really appreciate their work and just awesome job preparing our guys. And all the effort that they give us every single week is, is awesome. So continue to recognize those guys. So excited about this week, chance to play on the road in a Big Ten game against Maryland, very talented football team, and uh, much respect for their staff and, and uh, the, the quality of the skill that they have on offense and, and uh, the physical and uh, athleticism that they have on defense. So um, uh, just an uh, important week for us. Very, very, every week's a big week. Every week's important, and our guys have to understand it, and they do. And so uh, excited to be able to get our guys back out there tomorrow and get back to work. Questions? I guess just to kind of go back on Jack, I mean, what um, what did you guys actually, what can you tell us about what you learned from the MRI? And um, I guess just how do you sort of just handle that going forward as far as, you know, getting Donovan ready, getting Grant ready? Sure. Um, what do you look back and say maybe should have been prepared for better for the, for the possible circumstances of Jack going down? I guess just what do you just do with quarterback going forward from this week? Yeah, I would say, you know, um, what the MRI taught us or showed us was that uh, um, it uh, – wasn't as bad as it could have been. I guess that was probably the first words I was given. Um, and I think with that, uh, uh, but definitely was enough to where um, create some unknowns for him to be able to um, know his status moving forward on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, um, hopefully uh, be able to recover from that and as, as efficiently as possible. Um, and, you know, I would say, you know, with, with Donovan, you know, you feel – Good about certain things that you wanted to be able to do, have him ready for, uh, per his, uh, you know, his skill set and, and the reps he's gotten at this point. And so, but uh, um, you know, obviously you you prepare and he practiced and took those reps as, as number two all week, and uh, um, and then uh, uh, Grant actually took some reps as well, um, especially more in third down situations and passing situations. But uh, um, yeah, you just go through and prepare you know the best that you can with your guys and you have so many reps each week and obviously he was the guy taking those and and uh, getting yourself ready for that and and so but you just go through and, and then you get in that moment and obviously it happened very early in the game and, and then it's raining you know so it's really tough for, for a kid being his first opportunity against such a high level opponent and tough weather conditions it just created a tough situation for him without doubt but I thought he uh, proved throughout the game uh, glad he got all those reps Definitely pay dividends moving forward, um, no matter how much he has to play in the future. And I thought that he got more comfortable and uh, doing some things and made some nice runs and took some big hits and popped back up and and uh, made some throws and, and just has to continue to, to grow with that. So but it's really about, you know, just building things around uh, where he feels comfortable and, and can, can function at a high level and be able to, you know, do the things he needs to do to help us win a football game. Now, when you have an offense struggling like you do now, it's sort of incumbent on the defense and special teams especially to kind of pick them up a little bit. 
Uh, your defense had been playing pretty well, but uh, certainly in the first half, you know, got gashed pretty badly. Once you had a chance uh, to watch everything that happened on film in that first half, uh, what were the, the specific issues there, and do you think they can be resolved quickly? Yeah, I think first of all, you know, you got to go through and, and uh, evaluate, but like we did, and, and we go through and do things and, and uh, watch it very closely and, and discuss it as staff. And, and there's definitely some things you go back, and, you know, they obviously are a very good football team, you know, and, and I've been here several years now and, and obviously played them every single year. And, and uh, um, you know, after playing them in person, you know, and, and uh, seeing them, you know, that's it's the best Ohio State offense that we've faced since I've been here. Um, and, uh, Offensive line is impressive, big and physical and athletic. Uh, they keep getting better and better um, up front. And then I thought their quarterback, you know, obviously had shown some youth early in the season, but that's in the past. And uh, extremely talented quarterback. Uh, we already talked about the receivers. They're the three of the best in the country as a group. I don't know if there's any group better. Um, can't imagine that. And then you got a running back that gives them the home run gear that uh, haven't had always had always haven't always had that. You know, uh, in that spot, definitely not last year. And so, yeah, it's a really special offense. So it creates a lot of problems for you, you know. And so I think, you know, you go through, and we obviously had some injuries in the secondary, and so trying to do a good job of protecting those guys and helping them out. And so, you know, uh, kept things in front of us, but uh, too soft in that regard, I thought, you know, gave up too much underneath and and a lot of yards there. And then, then, then did, uh, um, didn't do a good job. The, the tempo gives you some trouble, but uh, that's they're always they, they didn't do that new, um, but it just still creates issues just because of the all the other variables you're talking about. So I just think that uh, you know I really love our defensive guys, and uh, uh, wasn't for the lack of effort. They played hard, you know, didn't tackle as well as we need to. Um, but uh, I think just there was a little hesitancy. I thought that sometimes in our guys that I hadn't seen out of them before this season, definitely haven't seen it. Uh, recently, so um, you know, I guess the thing that's that was that was another reason for the um, throwing the trash. You know, so we're not going to over overly um, beat ourselves up in that regard. You know, we obviously make corrections and press on. That was my challenge to our guys, and we did not play to our standard without question. And uh, so, um, but we can't let that last one affect the next one. That's really what it comes down to for me. And that's, that's absolutely not going to happen. And, and uh, we've got to talk to our guys, we meet with some more guys even today and, and a lot yesterday and just being able to make them understand that, you know. So uh, we got a lot of really good players on defense and, and we're going to just, uh, you know, learn the things we need to learn from that one and press on. Yeah, uh, Tom, you're facing a quarterback, Kalia, that you saw last year, obviously here. Uh, what have you seen on film in terms of his growth and improvement and just the challenge of, uh, you know, seeing him again and facing him again a second time this week? Yes, he's a very talented player. Um, very quick release. Um, just uh, big time arm and can run. That's probably the two the, the things that really stick out to me with him is just his ability to to, to get rid of, rid of the ball so quickly and efficiently and then uh, the way he moves athletically. You know, he's a true dual guy that uh, you have to account for that. And uh, has talent around him, really good running backs, and and uh, another group of talented group, which they've always had. Every time we've played Maryland, I and mean, their speed and athleticism is is near the top of this league, um, which affects special teams play. They see it on defense; it shows up in the skill positions on offense, and that's the same this year. It's no different. So, um, but I think he uh, he's another year older, and uh, um, just got to continue to do a tremendous job of of affecting him. You know, we know that that's what you have to do with really good quarterbacks and. And uh, he does a really good job. High per uh, completion percentage for him is very high, and that's because he's uh, he's really good, you know. And so, and we just got to do a great job defensively, and that's going to be uh, on us as a staff and our players to to respond and to, to be able to put together a great plan. Uh, offensively, coach, the offensive line was thought to be one of the more comprehensive units coming back this year, but it's been one of the most problematic. What have you seen that has led to that? Uh, with the experience there that it's not getting the results that uh, you were hoping for? Yeah, so I would say, you know, lack of consistency continues to be an issue. And um, just going through, I felt like even just watching it again, um, you know, and we're going to go through and just you know, and look at uh, even just some, you know, making some, we have to make some movements there to get some other guys involved and just to be able to address as guys will continue to develop uh, throughout the season. But I think it's been isolated breakdowns. You know, you got uh, certain things happen the way they're supposed to on certain plays, and 
and uh, and then and then the next one not, and then but it can't happen, you know. And it was just isolated situations where one guy got beat one on one, happened several times, and and it can't happen, you know. And those those games, those situations, key third downs, or you know, creates a tackle for loss, and you get penetration, and it just disrupts everything, you know. So um, communication at times um, wasn't what it was supposed to be, and yeah, it's been frustrating and disappointing without question up front. But they they got to just you know keep battling and got to get better, and we got to coach them better. We got to improve those guys. Like I said, we'll make some adjustments if we need to here this week and to get uh, um, the result we want, you know. But yeah, we've got a, it's an area that we need to have step up, obviously with. Uh, Injuries we've had at quarterback and the ability for our guys to be able to um, effectively move down the field like we did that first drive and get in the end zone. So um, obviously that shows you what we can do when you do things the right way and you communicate and uh, effectively block. And we ran the ball, we threw the ball, and that's what you have to do consistently throughout the game. So to me, um, that's going to be the focus, and that's that's a, a constant thing. Michael Penix was hurt three weeks ago. Jack Tuttle was your guy. Knowing that Donovan was one hit away from being your quarterback, how, how is it possible that there were just small packages? He wasn't fully, I guess, prepared or, or better prepared by the coaching staff to, to run more of the offense in the, in the event that Jack got hurt. Well, I would just say that when I talk about certain packages, I mean, there's a lot within those packages to be able to do. And, and the bottom line is, is that he was the number two. He took every single number two rep, you know, throughout the week. And uh, um, bottom line is, is that uh, he took those practice reps and, and uh, you know, we went through the things we felt like he was comfortable doing, you know, with where he's at right now in his development. And so, to me, you got to be able to, to, to execute those. And, and uh, we didn't execute those at the highest level possible, for my, in my opinion, obviously. The, the, the results speak for themselves. And, and so, but, uh, you know, obviously it's a challenging situation for us to be in at this point, you know, in that room. And, uh, you know, we have uh, those guys that are there and they got to be ready to play. And so, but, uh, you know, the, he was obviously, you know, the guy that took those reps as, as, uh, as we went through each day in practice. And then being able to take that from the practice field to the game field is what has to happen, you know. So, but, uh, you know, obviously he, uh, you know, was thrown into a tough situation after the first drive of the game. And, uh, uh, but that's why Grant played because we had certain things that he, we thought he could do well as well. And so it didn't make a big deal about, you know, leading up to it. But if, if it was necessary for him to be in there, then he was, you know, ready to do that. And that's why he played. Just, just following up on that, just Donovan, I guess, probably has the chance to be taking a lot more of number one reps this week, I, I'd imagine. How, how do you get him ready? Obviously, I know you can't comment on, like, what, you know, what's going to happen this weekend because obviously Jack's health is in question. But, I guess, how, how do you get him ready for a potential first collegiate start this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, with the unknowns that you have with Jack, I man, you have to just fully, you know, prepare him in that regard mentally and physically and from a rep's perspective. And we'll see how the week plays itself out as far as how much that, that happens, you know, with Jack. But the bottom line is, is, you know, Jack's obviously played and gotten a lot of reps in the past, and whereas Donovan needs to continue to get as many reps as possible. So you have to kind of have that mindset that he's going to be – the guy, and then uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, bottom line is, is that that would be the approach: is to be able to get him ready and get uh, get Grant ready as well. And those two guys have to be getting the majority of the reps and getting themselves in position to play. So that's going to be the approach. I talked to a lot of fans after the game, and they said that your pep talks and your speeches are IU saving grace. They love hearing your speeches. Um, so what were those conversations that you've had with your team about lifting up their spirits and preparing them for a road game against Maryland? Well, I mean, uh, you know, those conversations we have, and we had an important one on Sunday, um, are, are critical to this team and our psyche and, and where we're at. And it's just understanding your guys and and where they are and, and the culture you have on your team and your locker room and the strength of your locker room and the strength of our guys and, and just appealing to that, you know, and focus on the things that we can control, which is our attitude and our mindset and, and the way we approach every day. And to me, that's really the focus is, is uh, the way that we think and uh, the way that we uh, approach certain things. It's not how we feel. It's, it's, it's the, the reality of our mindset and the way we approach life when life is hard and things don't go your way. Um, and, and things get difficult and things don't turn out the way you expect them to or want them to, how you going to respond, you know. And to me, that's the critical nature of life. That's the critical nature of, 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 of sport and how it teaches you about those things. And so to me, that's been the emphasis. I don't want to get into the details, but uh, uh, without question, you know, we just have to, you know, it's about capturing your hearts and minds of your players and being able to help them handle 
the difficulties that they're facing right now, and uh, which is a microcosm of what they'll face later in life, you know. And so uh, that's really what this is all about, is helping these men develop into those qualities and so they can lead their homes one day and lead their communities one day and whatever line of work they're in, they're able to be leaders in those settings through the good times and the bad times. And that's what this teaches us. But obviously, we do all that to be able to help them come together and play their best football to be able to accomplish our objective of winning on game day, you know. So, but that's why I think there's a dual purpose in all this, and it uh, serves a, a, a great role for the future. But it's a never more critical than right now when you're trying to uh, allow a team to stay together and fight together and be able to learn to do the little things it takes to to find a way to make things happen when when things are going against you. Coach, how do you evaluate quarterback durability over the last two or three years? Do you feel like you're snake bit? Is there anything at all with regards to, you know, keeping guys healthy? I know you tried to put weight on Mike, and obviously that didn't, you know, work out. Even Jack, even last year uh, during the uh, Outback Bowl game, got banged up in the shoulder. Uh, is it just one of those things? Or? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've, in the past, I don't know, you know, there's certain types of injuries. I mean, if they're, if they're volume you know, injuries, I mean, you know, with the quarterback position, I mean, you, you, we all would agree, you know, there's certain things you don't do with them during the week. You know, you don't hit them, you know, you don't hit them in fall camp, you don't hit them in spring ball, you don't hit them in those things during leading up to the game, you know. Um, so, but I, I just think that, uh, you know, you've, we've had some, you know, joint issues, you know, you've had, you know, ligament issues, you know, when you have torn ACLs and, and uh, now with Jack's foot, you know, um, that's tough. You know, there are kind of things that, uh, how do you prevent those? You know, um, don't have all the answers for that. You know, obviously there's a there's a hit, you know, variable. When you take hits, you increase your chances of, of having guys injured, you know. So, uh, but uh, sometimes the guys get hit a whole bunch and they never get injured, you know. So uh, I think this, I mean, I mean, if you look at their history in their past, I mean, either one of those guys had, uh, they didn't come to us with a history of getting injured in high school, you know, so I guess if that had that been the case um, And those are things you look at when you recruit guys, you know, do they have a history of injury and uh, um, Sometimes it's predictive and sometimes it's not but they did not neither one of them had that, you know, so um, Which is even more frustrating, you know, so but at the same time, you know, I mean, I don't know that any of us any coach they are part of the game, you know, that's like we've always talked about it, you know, those are two things that everybody uses to evaluate predicting games is who's home and away and who's who's healthy, you know, so it's obviously very critical to your team's performance, but, you know, preventing them, you know, I mean, we're trying to do everything we can to keep our team healthy throughout the week and, and uh, you know, everything you do in the off season to be able to prepare their bodies, to be able to be an elite athlete that, uh, you know, stays in the game and is able to, if you do have some setbacks, you're able to get back, you know, with the issues we've had with our secondary. I mean, there's been things that are, it's tough, you know, I don't know how you prevent some of those, you know, so, but we're doing everything we can to make sure we're not missing something and some self-evaluation on that. So, but yeah, we're just trying to, you know, right now this has been a, a tough year for injuries. I don't know the Big Ten teams are the, the games that you've lost, the opponents I think are a combined 31 and four going forward. The schedule isn't as packed with a bunch of top 10 teams. I think there's one. So just in terms of the second half of the schedule, the fact that you're not facing this elite competition week after week after week, how does that help you kind of refocus your team? Does it give you a better chance to get a measuring stick on your team? Just how, how do you approach that any differently than you already have? Well, you know, I think our, we did just you know, talk to our guys because it's, it's, it's obvious that they know and it's been well documented how difficult our schedule has been and who we've played and where they're ranked. And so, you know, and you can look at schedule and see it, but still it's the focus is the next one, you know, and that's been the priority even yesterday and really nothing beyond that. Um, uh, obviously, big picture wise, you, you do understand how that dynamic looks and how your, how your season plays itself out and when you play which teams where on, on the schedule. But, but in regards to your team right now, where we are, it is solely focused on one opponent, and that's Maryland. And everything you do, every all your energy, everything you have, when you do all focuses on getting yourself in the best position possible to play your best on the road and get a win, you know, at Maryland. That's the focus. So that's where we're at. And uh, take them one at a time and be able to uh, build from there. And there's no doubt that this team has uh, been through a lot. And uh, we're going to stay together, keep battling, keep fighting, and continue to stay focused on the task at hand, which is, Beat Maryland. 
forgive me for this because we're kind of asking the same question over again but a different way. But as far as, I mean, um, you talked after the game about how Donovan just, he hadn't been part of spring practice. You know, he was basically taking the reps with the threes. I mean, how far did he need to go in, I guess, the, the I guess two, three weeks when he was really taking the reps with the number two? How much progress do you think he made in that point? And, and how exactly do you accelerate that? Yeah, I think it does, does need to be accelerated. I think that as soon as he was, you know, when he wasn't the number two, you know, he was getting some reps without question, but not a lot, you know. Um, and, and, you know, and I think, too, you know, being a guy that was, a, you know, a three-sport athlete guy that just didn't sit around and play football in his off season, you know. He was playing other sports, and which is fine, and that's, that's part of, of – you know his, you know, past, and that's that's part of, of who he is, and makes him as athletic as he is. But uh, also, probably, you know, created a situation where he wasn't, did not have a lot of the a rep base that maybe other guys may have. But uh, at the same time, you know, that's uh, where he was, and and uh, uh, right now it needs to be accelerated, and that's where, you know, that's been the case here recently, and that's been why he's taken all those reps, and and then you got to continue to to find out as we get a better feel from him. He was he was at the time, you know. Early in the season, he was one of our scout team quarterbacks, you know, and uh, which is the truth, you know. And so, uh, just to get him a chance to play and get more reps and just be able to go against our defense and and uh, um, be comfortable playing football, you know, and, and making those, you know, decisions of throwing to who, whoever in, in the secondary. So, but I think that that's where you know right now he's a talented athlete that, that hasn't played a lot of college football, and so he's a big kid and he's tall and athletic and and uh, we just have to you know build the things around what he. Um, is best at and allows him to be successful. So that's the objective. That's the that's the goal, and that's the uh, that's the charge for our guys. And so I've been uh, working hard on that these last couple of days, and that will continue. All right. Have a great day, Elio.